Welcome, everyone, and thank you so much, Square Enix, for sponsoring this lovely Final Fantasy VII roundtable with all of these amazing, amazing creators here with me. And we are going to be talking about Final Fantasy VII, obviously. Um, but before we dive deep into this conversation, I want to give everybody a chance who you probably should already know to introduce themselves. I will go in the order of which we are on the screen, and I will start off. Uh, hi, what is up? It's me, Curious Joy, and you can find me here everywhere as Curious Joy. I'll just make it quick because we have a lot to discuss. Jahara? Hey, I'm Jahara Jade. You can find me everywhere as Jahara Jade, except YouTube is Jahara Jade Games. I'm a cosplayer and I love Final Fantasy, obviously. <laughs> Uh, hi there i'm minda baby you can just call me midna um i mostly stream on twitch.tv forward slash midna you can also find me on other social platforms um i'm a variety streamer i play rpgs jrpgs mmos and so much more hi i'm miss kylie you can just call me kylie my uh ign is the same on every platform except instagram there's a period in between miss and kylie but it's nice to meet you guys. I officially hit 10 years of streaming recently. So uh, it's a big, big platform. It's really good. Um, and yeah, you can find me playing a ton of variety games. I love MMOs. I love story games and RPGs. Hi, um, I'm Sarah Key, and um, I love a lot of JRPGs. Kingdom Hearts is my favorite. I make content on stuff like that. Final Fantasy, obviously. Um, and you could just find me at Sarah Key on YouTube and Twitch, um, and the Sarah Key on Twitter and Instagram. Hi, um, I'm Spofy um, on all platforms except for Twitter, which has an extra E. Um, I am a Final Fantasy 14 player turned Final Fantasy interested aficionado. So I am the baby here. I don't know. Um, I only have experience with like Final Fantasy remake, not actually playing the original. So um but yeah that's me i'm a vtuber and i play a lot of final fantasy 14 and rpgs and stuff awesome and again i know i said it before but thanks so much square enix for sponsoring today's round table it's because yes. of you we're all here to discuss the greatest game of all time i don't know you know final <laughs> fantasy 7 but we're going to start off backwards from our introductions and kind of start off Spofy kind of already touched on it a little bit about how that she's the quote unquote new person in the realm besides Final Fantasy XIV. But what got you into Final Fantasy in general? Yeah, I mean, I can start, I guess, because I already rambled on into it. But <laughs> <laughs> I had definitely played like a couple Final Fantasy games growing up on my Game Boy, but I literally don't even remember what they were because I was 10 and could not comprehend a story at the time, apparently. Um, so when I got older and started playing 14, that's when everybody was like, hey, you'd enjoy this game much more if you checked out the others and understood the references. And so I've been going back and playing some of them, but I really appreciate the remakes because it kind of lets me experience these stories with, with like the modern QOL that I guess I'm like kind of used to. So nice, Sarah um so i got into final fantasy um uh, from kingdom hearts actually um like i knew that there were kingdom heart or there were final fantasy characters in kingdom hearts um so that got me interested but when i was a kid um i wasn't allowed to play them so the only final fantasy that my parents let me play they got me final fantasy 3 for the ds um and then i just started playing a lot more older final fantasies as i got into streaming um and final fantasy 7 is what actually got me to like turn-based so yep nice you know who's next kylie <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> um i want to say the first final fantasy game i had ever played was final fantasy 13 um that was like my first intro into final fantasy and i i had never played a game like that in my life um, and it wasn't until I started streaming that I started to get into other Final Fantasy games. Like Spofy, I started with Final Fantasy XIV for streaming. That was the very first game I ever streamed on my channel and fell in love. And then the audience that came with that told me, oh, you should play, you know, Final Fantasy X, love that. Final Fantasy VII, love that. And now I'm here on this journey to hopefully play every Final Fantasy game on my stream. 
Uh, I'm actually, I'm the same way. I started with Final Fantasy 13. Um, it was just through my best friend in high school. She was getting the game and I thought she had great taste in games and I had no idea what Final Fantasy was. So I was like, okay, I'm going to also buy this game because the main character looks really pretty. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, I, I had, again, no idea what Final Fantasy was and know what turn-based stuff was because I grew up very much like a Nintendo kid and I was very new to PlayStation and, and um, RPGs outside of Zelda. Um, but it's literally one of my favorite games now. It's probably one of the coolest combat systems. Um, so I'm really glad that I started with that one. And then shortly after, I started playing Final Fantasy XIV because I was already into MMOs, like, wow. And then I switched over. Um, and then when I started streaming, I was mostly variety. And then I started bringing in Final Fantasy XIV content. And again, much like Kylie, people were like, hey, have you played these other titles, um, which I hadn't. It was only 13 and 14, but I've now played Final Fantasy um, 4, 6, the original 7 after the remake, um, 8, 9, 10, 13, 14, 15, 16, yeah. So now I'm like really ingrained in the Final Fantasy universe, so. Nice. Yara. <laughs> I mean, for me, like so many of the rest of you, I'm just like, I feel like I sound a little redundant now, but I started. <laughs> it's okay, I'll be different, like... don't worry. Because <laughs> right? like... it's funny, the first time I mention it on stream, people are like, what did you, why are you playing these games? I'm just like, it's actually, you know what? I don't think anyone else is like this. I started by playing 14, and then <laughs> I'm like, I guess we're all like this. So I started by 14. <laughs> Because I was playing a different game, um, RPGs before, but I would always be sad when like they would end. And then my fr my husband was like, "You should play an MMO. The story just continues forever." Mm -hmm. and I'm like, "I don't know. I don't know if I can do that." And I started playing 14, fell in love, got caught up, and was like, "So I hear there's like more of these." And everyone was like, "Girl, you have no idea." So <laughs> then we started playing. So since then, I have played um, similar to Midna. Um, outside of the pixel remaster so i've done six seven i'm playing eight right now uh nine uh ten ten two twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and sixteen yeah <laughs> we're working our way through this nice dang you're making yeah. good progress that's a lot <laughs> thank you it's been a couple of years <laughs> it worked it worked <laughs> And as for me, I did not start off by playing Final Fantasy XIV. I start off by playing Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. I may be aging myself at this point, but uh, <laughs> I grew up with uh, three older brothers at the time. And they would I would walk by the TV because we had one TV. And then I would walk by. I was like, what are these pixels? And why does this look very intriguing to me? And they're like, well, this is Final Fantasy and you can't play it because you don't know how to read yet. So I definitely <laughs> learned how to read so I can play Final Fantasy. Um, <laughs> oh. I wouldn't have not, I would never have played the game if I, you know, didn't see it and got told to read. And I was like, I had no encouragement to read, but I want to play this game. Um, and then from there, like I just went on, obviously not until launch because I was still young at the time, but I played all of the ones on Super Nintendo, the ones that were released in North America at the time. And then I had said Final Fantasy VII was out when I was transitioning over to homeschool. And so it was like the perfect game for me to like get into. And then after that, I started playing every single Final Fantasy on launch. Um, but yeah, I, I'm the one that did not start off with 14. <laughs> I have been starting from the ground up and everyone's like, what got you into Final Fantasy? I was like, I don't know. I walked by a TV and said that one. <laughs> <laughs> But since we are definitely here for Final Fantasy VII, though this was not on the list of topics we were going to do, I realize we don't have any reason of what got you to actually play Remake. Because all of you all started with Final Fantasy XIV or XIII. So what actually got you to say, hey, Remake looks cool. I want to get into that. So anyone can go first and then you can go from there. Yeah. I... I Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, or all at once. All at once. <laughs> this is probably gonna happen a lot. But it's okay. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Kylie. Okay. Um. Well, basically, I I had, I think I was already going to 
jump into Final Fantasy VII, the original. But then literally, I am not kid you not, one week later, they started to announce more information about it. So I was like, wait, I'm going to hold off. I'm going to play the remake first. Probably not the best idea, but I did it anyways. I played the remake, but that got me even more interested to, to play the original. So... I just heard information. It was just like right time for me where I was like, oh, that this game looks amazing. So I'm just going to wait. I'm going to play remake. And then after that, I'll play the original. That's that's my story. I heard um, both. both yeah, okay. I, can, <laughs> I, <can go. laughs> I honestly um, was really scared to play FF7 on stream because I just knew that it was like so beloved to so many people. And I was like, oh my gosh, what if I don't like it? And then I upset people. I don't know. I had like a whole like <laughs> existential crisis. So then when um, the remake came out, I was like, oh, hey, brand new game. There's like less um, pressure behind playing this. I'm going to go play it. And yeah, it was great. <laughs> I heard Jahara say something too. Then Sarah and Midna can go out. Okay, cool. <laughs> I was like, I'm not leaving anyone out. <laughs> For me, and in the same vein as like Sophie, this sort of upset a few people. When I started playing like the new, the standalone titles, and people, were, we, I would play just based on what people told me to play, rather than like playing in any kind of order, just based on popularity. And obviously, Seven is extremely popular. But to be honest, I didn't actually start playing video games like on my own, not just at parties, until like 2017. So everyone's like, Seven, you have to play Seven, and I was like, I'd like never played a game with graphics that old before. <laughs> So I was like, I don't wanna. And like, right when they were discussing that remake came out and I was like, there, yeah, now I'll play. Like literally it was just like, oh, okay. Well now that like, it looks beautiful. Now I'll play. Um, <laughs> just like, hands up, I'm sorry. No, I'm right there with you. Yeah. I know it like upsets people, it. but. <laughs> if you don't have the nostalgia, it's, it's harder to jump into older oh. games. Yeah. Is it? Oh, oh my God. Everyone's saying that they can't hear me. For some reason, we what can happened? hear you. Hmm? We can hear. Oh yeah, we hear. Oh, everyone in chat saying that I sound super low all of a sudden, and I am seeing that. Oh, hold on. Maybe Let me sound, scroll wheel. We sound great here. So. <laughs> yeah, we got you. Don't worry. Who didn't hear a thing? <laughs> That's so weird. It's coming in really low on my OBS. Shoot. Um, yeah, can my, just on add my end. Some gain to it. On uh, a gain filter. Uh. That's so odd. The, I don't know what happened. I was like turning it off and on and muting it, but now, hold on. I sound very distant, everyone. Hmm. Maybe it's pulling uh -oh. from another side. Because everyone can hear you on, on my end. They yeah. can hear you. Yeah. Hold on. Let me adjust it real quick. Uh, yeah. Sorry or... for the technical difficulties, everyone. Sorry, it's, it, yeah. it's been a, it's it's been a ride. Been. It's been... <laughs> It's been, it's been a bit. <laughs> but I'll take, well, 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 while yeah. Tahara figures this out, I will take this opportunity to let you guys know that any topic that we are discussing here, feel free to talk amongst yourselves in the chats, the comment section, wherever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that way you can be a part of the conversation. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, we will get this fixed on this end and continue. Uh, okay, fixed it. <laughs> cool. <Nice>. Perfect. <laughs> Uh, where, where did you have anything else to say just before I'm like, move on? No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just leave it it's at okay. that. Everyone on your streams heard me. Sorry to my <laughs> chat. <laughs> this will be recorded. You can watch it later, guys. Don't yeah. worry. We'll, we'll be yeah, able to watch yeah. It later. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Midna, what, what about you? What, what made you play seven? Um... So I had an interest in Seven just overall because I know how beloved the, the game is specifically. But at the time, this was like before I started playing like the older games because for me, I was very used to modern graphics. So yeah, kind of same reason as like Jahara just didn't really have that appreciation or interest to go back that far because um, I was just so used to a certain look. But luckily, um, 
I mean, when Remake came out, I was already interested because by then I was a, a Square Enix and Final Fantasy fan and I'm going to play anything that they release. Um, and luckily it gave me an interest to actually like start going back and experiencing um, the older Final Fantasy titles. And when I did eventually get to 7, um, I had a newfound appreciation for older graphics and I fully understood the the love behind Final Fantasy 7. And I... I don't regret like going into remake first at all because if I hadn't played remake, I probably wouldn't have gone to the original seven. Um, so just learning about the whole story now, uh, I have like a newfound excitement for discovering what they're going to be adding to rebirth. And like, I want to go and replay remake so I can kind of pick and see like um, details that I probably missed the first time I played without any Final Fantasy seven knowledge. So, so yeah. Nice. And Sarah? Um, so I have a couple of reasons, but I, I will say I also relate to the graphic thing. Like, I was very hesitant to play OG Final Fantasy VII. In fact, for some reason, I think I tried playing it like three times before I actually played it to completion. Um, once I got to like a certain part, which is actually the part that they cover in the demo, um, I was hooked. But... Um, I think I played seven like right before remake was either announced or came out. I honestly don't remember if it was announced or not when I played original seven. Um, but yeah. And also like knowing that a lot of the team from Kingdom Hearts was on the remake team made me want to play it even more because um, like I said, I'm like super into Kingdom Hearts. So uh yeah but i have like a very similar story to everyone else like it made me want to go back and play a bunch of older final fantasies and stuff too nice and here i come being the the, the different one <laughs> uh it's it's so interesting like that's the thing that i love about it and that's the thing that i love about just final fantasy in general and final fantasy 7 remake and soon to be rebirth coming out is that everyone has their own reason to start playing it and found their own love for it to be able to get hooked on it for me, I didn't have the graphics issues because at the time when the game came out, it was like the best graphics ever on the planet because it was like everything looked like that. I was like, oh my God, Square Enix actually loves to like push the envelope with their blocky hands. Like this is so cool, I don't <laughs> understand. And then it's just like, it was such it was such an enjoyment going through the original at the time that it was without having all these wild graphics um, because you got to enjoy every single time you got to the cutscene, and every time it became even more you know what it's the norm now and so i was like oh my god this is the part there's the same point something wild is gonna happen right now because there's gonna be a cutscene, and i'll never forget like in the original like the my, the thing that lives rent free in my head it was just the best scene was cloud going down on the bicycle and the original i was like i like this guy he's my favorite <laughs> <laughs> But it's just it's just really cool, and that's what that's what the cool thing about it is that it doesn't matter when you jump into Final Fantasy or Final Fantasy Seven. Like there's there's still that love years later for the original, which is great. But the original was long ago, and Rebirth was a few a re remake was a few years ago. But Rebirth is in a couple of days at this point. Um, what is everybody most excited for? I'm gonna start off with Midna this time. For rebirth. Oh my god, I'm so glad you chose me because I was like gold saucer. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> excited for the gold saucer. <laughs> I love like amusement parks and theme parks, you know, like I'm a huge fan of just those in real life. So when I discovered like the gold saucer um in like Final Fantasy 13, again, that was my my first um Final Fantasy experience. Um I when I went into the gold saucer in the original I was like oh my god this is gonna be like the best thing when we eventually get to it in remake because I just I love little mini games and it's such a nice break from the main quest and it's just yeah it's, it's nice to just feel like a kid again especially um with how the mini games go but yeah that's that's my number one um thing that I'm most excited about aside from everything else that there is to be excited about sarah oh that's like i'm like that's mixing it up one. because i see who's talking <laughs> it's a hard question because um there's so many things to be excited about uh i'll say just very briefly my number one is zach 
I'm most excited to see Zach. <laughs> but um, my, I would say, I would say I really am excited about like the new like relationship system, like how you can grow bonds with the characters, like just being able to do like side quests and stuff to get to know them better, um, like outside of the original. Like I feel like the original. What they do is they like take the original and then they make it a lot more detailed. And I'm just really excited to see like all of the all of the new personality and stuff that gets added into Rebirth and see how they do everything from the original. Yeah, I love that stuff in games. I love when they put in some sort of like bond system with characters where you get to like specifically like build relationship with them and see their backstory as you want. Like I don't know. It feels it's such a nice experience. I know in like Final Fantasy 16, there were like a couple side quests where you got to like see people's backstories. And I was like, give me more. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I mean, I agree. Yeah, I can go. I I agree with the fact with the relationship system because in, in remake, they had something akin to it. But like my community is like huge on like no vaccinating and no spoilers. So nobody told me that like doing side quests or how often I interacted with characters would have any like bearing on my playthrough and so I was really shook when things like happened that had to do with like how I acted before and I was like what so like now I like that it's like really laid out for you that like you can choose about like how your relationship goes it's going to add this lovely level of excitement and anxiety for me to be the people pleaser that I am so that I'm 100% relationship with every single character. Yeah. <laughs> like we're all going to be best that. friends and we're all going to go to the gold saucer on a single date together. Yes, I want to <laughs> date you all. <laughs> I don't know how you all can fit in the gondola, but okay, try it. <laughs> we're going to act the game. We're all getting on the gondola, okay? <laughs> well, I am really excited for that. Kylie yeah y'all said a lot of good points I love the relationship uh aspect that I'm really excited about that I'm really excited about the gold saucer like Minda said and like Sarah said like there's so many things to be excited about I'm really excited to see what they're no spoilers but I'm really excited to see what they're gonna do with the story um because I feel like this this kind of change whether I don't know what kind of changes they're gonna do um, I've just heard that it's gonna, they're going to change it a little bit. But that's great for both newcomers to the game as well as, like, veterans. I feel like it's it kind of makes, like, all the new mini games that we were talking about um, and the, the story be kind of refreshing as well as newcomers can kind of just, like, jump into this um, and, I don't know, like, be able to experience it fresh for the, like, first time. Like, everybody's going to be expressing, or experiencing it. But I feel like the story is what I'm looking forward to the most, as well as like be able being able to see like the new characters um, that haven't been introduced yet into uh, uh, Rebirth. So that's what I'm excited about. Nice. Yeah, I'm like all of you all combined. Plus, I'm way too excited to a hundred percent every single piano song. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just spend hours and hours playing the piano mini game. Even in the demo, I sat there. I'm like, I'm not leaving this piano until I get 100% on Tifa's song. This is my mission in life. <laughs> <laughs> but besides that, yeah, it's like, it's so like Kylie said, there's going to be so many different changes that people that are brand new to the series and people that aren't brand new to the series are going to be like, I have no idea what's going to happen. Of course, the people in, that played the original have a little bit of a leg up, but it doesn't ever like affect the experience of people it is. And like this, that's a really cool thing about Rebirth is that even if you so happen to not have played Remake, you can also play Rebirth and just have a whole set story. Because I think that's one of the things that they really wanted to make sure that happened is that you can pick up and play and then eventually go back if you really wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing that I'm really excited to see is we already saw her a little bit in the DLC, but Vincent and Yuffie, because in the original, um, they were people that you could miss. And so it's nice to see that they are adding them to the main story. So I wanted to see what you all's thoughts are about that, having Vincent and Yuffie. Sarah? <laughs> okay. Um, I had a very hard time getting Yuffie to join my party in Original 7. So 
Um, I'm very excited that, you know, she's probably just gonna, I mean, I don't know, we might have to, like, do something, maybe, to, like, initiate her. I'm not really sure how it's gonna work, but it seems like, yeah, she's gonna join. Um, so I'm really excited about that, and then I think the Vincent thing is even more exciting, because, um, he's very mysterious, and I think it's gonna be really interesting to see them really, like, flesh out his character, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think for me, there's a lot of names that I hear all the time and I don't know who they are and I'm so ready. <laughs> like, like, I genuinely know nothing about Zach. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. okay. It's okay. <laughs> It'll be oh, fun. You will hopefully soon know more about Zach. Yes. I know. I'm so ready. Uh, anyone else? I don't. Uh, well, for me, I had the fortune of finding them both like accidentally because I just like to explore everything. And I'm, ex I'm so excited to see them. I'm not sure how they'll be introduced, but whether or not like you had them on your team really impacted like wh what could happen in the story when you played the original. So I'm really curious to see if they'll include those story beats in Rebirth. And where and how, since we all know that they plan on changing the story. So, like, how that's going to come through, like, no, no spoilers. Hard to say things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, be like, just say that part. Because I'm, I'm so excited. Like, there's some stuff I really, Yuffie being in my party changed a lot of how I, perce how I perceive the game and my overall experience. So I'm so glad that she's going to be here in so many ways but i'm more <laughs> most excited for vincent also because <laughs> because you doing that you know. i know exactly what you're referring to <laughs> jahara has a vendetta against you <laughs> no spoilers though <laughs> uh, and then vincent's just seeing him even from behind in the trailers just like the beautiful nearly 4k eye candy it's a gift to all of us both new and old <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> yes i feel like i'm just i'm excited just to be able to learn more about them uh it's been it's i mean it's been a bit since i've played remake and the original so i can vaguely remember some of their backstory so i'd like to be able to like get more information just about them i mean i was lucky enough to play final fantasy 7 the original on stream so i had help to get yuffie and Vincent. Um, I don't know what the game would be like without them, honestly. Um, so I hope they're more involved in the story, like you guys were saying. Like, I'm really, ha I'm really hoping that, um, I'm really happy that they're maybe like pushing them more to be like, hey, like these are characters. <laughs> they're in the game. But yeah, I'm very yeah. curious to see how they're gonna integrate the characters into the main story because yeah, coming across them is a little bit random, especially Vincent. But I, I don't want to like talk about anything spoiler related. Um, but Vincent is one of the most interesting characters, I think, and the fact that he is missable in um, the original is kind of crazy because if you do, you know, his his backstory and stuff, he's he's a has a very interesting um, story. I mean, same with Yuffie. She has really awesome development, and I enjoyed um, her um, own story. So it's, yeah, I'm, I'm very curious to see how they're integrating it and if they're changing it or adding more specifically to, to Vincent for me, though. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, all, it's always been wild to me that they were missable because I was always the person that 100% everything growing up with that stuff. So it's like, oh, you realize they're never in any of the original cutscenes, right? I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. It's because they're technically like DLC. And then when Advent Children came out, it was like, who are those people? <laughs> like, when, <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. I remember a few people were like, who's that? I'm like, what do you mean, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> It's oh, so yeah. funny because, like, I'm the total opposite. I'll, like, put blinders on and just walk in a straight line through a game, like, and not check things sometimes. So I, I think mm -hmm. I probably would have missed them if I played the original. Yeah, I'm like that, too. I, I usually have a more, like, linear experience. I've gotten better, but yeah. 
Yeah, hopefully that's done very, very so you cannot miss it. Because like Vinda said, yeah. like Vincent is a very, very, very interesting character. Uh, so I can't wait. He he even had his own game, Dirge of Cerberus. <laughs> yep. So there's a there's a lot oh. to him that I hope we we get to get in Rebirth. Um, but with characters on the topic, it's time to do something a little fun. And I say fun. Uh, <laughs> with all the characters that your main the main roster of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, we know is Cloud, Aerith, Tifa, Yuffie. Uh, Red 13, Kate Seth, and Vincent. Yuffie Barrett. Yes. Yuffie Barrett. Barrett. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. And Zach. I'm also going to add, add, add a little Jesse in there. Add a little, just everybody from the seven main circle of bubble. We won't go and we'll, we'll add Sephiroth in there too. Uh, <laughs> but. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so let's, 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 add, let's add a little stuff wrong in there too uh, <laughs> I am going to list off and again anyone in chat or in the comments can by all means play along this is just all for fun um, name a character and you're going to tell me are they S tier B tier A tier and that's it, because no one's C tier. Come on, let's be real here. It's Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> <We're gonna re-chat. laughs> All right. So, number one. Zach. S S tier. S. 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 <laughs> oh, no, so tier lovable. The highest of tiers. Yeah, the highest. Yes, chat. Put, your, put it in there. Thank you. Triple S's. <laughs> Triple S's. S's. Infinity. My seven-year-old let me know that infinity is the highest number that you can't go beyond. She said so. so. <laughs> like Jahar said. <laughs> what was your rating, Bidna? For who? Zach? Zach. S. Easy. Okay. Because <laughs> I, um, why for you? I'm, well, I'm picking I... people randomly. <laughs> Well, because I played, I played Crisis Core, and I finally learned about Zach. Um, and I don't want to talk about spoilers because there are spoilers, but S tier, yeah. Play awesome. Crisis Core. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Agreed. Yes. yes. Actually, yeah. Actually, do 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 that if you have the time. Um, I'm so curious now. Everyone's making like fun oh, yeah. when they talk about him. I'm like, oh my god! Like, I hope uh, you understand soon, Sophie. No, I'm so yes. interested now. I'm like, maybe I should play Crisis Core. Everyone's making these you like, yes. little like, sexy like, side eyes when they're talking about. <laughs> I, just, I, I could go. I could go on and on and on about all these characters, but I I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't played. But like, play Crisis Core. It's yeah, okay, very okay. worth it. <laughs> it enhances right. your experience a lot, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. I just mm-hmm. I, I relate does. to him a lot, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel that. He's all the right. to me, he's like the kind of character like I enjoyed I mean I al- I always I also I just I enjoyed Final Fantasy Seven and the story and Crisis Core story so much, but it was something about his character that he's like the he's like the best friend that you always want in your circle. And I felt that playing the games, um, I just loved his personality and just what he stood for. And that's why I think he's S tier. He just made the game much more enjoyable. Like it was like a breath of breath of fresh air every time I would play. Cause I'm like, oh, I get to see Zach today <laughs> mm. <laughs> for my stream. Right. But Joy, Joy can contest. I met his uh, voice actor and I burst into tears because oh. that's how much he's oh. my favorite character. She didn't oh. know. Oh. I'm and, jealous. And then I <laughs> him immediately, and then I was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> that was the that reaction. <laughs> And the, and that's the beautiful too. thing uh, <laughs> of about uh, Caleb is that he literally exudes Zach. So when you like hear him and talk to him, he's just like, "I see why you are Zach because you literally are Zach." <laughs> <laughs> um. So well, that was obvious. I had to start off with Zach. Um, it's the best. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm gonna go to the other side of the spectrum and just someone else randomly that popped in my head. Red thirteen. This is hard because I want to. I want to give everyone an S. I know. I, I want wanna, everyone okay. to be S. 
I give him like okay, maybe I... an, a B, a B just for now because I feel like in the original, like I don't know, I feel like there's a lot more I can learn about him. Like he's yeah. a phenomenal character, and I just don't know if I got enough of that in the original. In remake, like he's yeah, oh, and, and in remake, of course, because um, like they are fleshing out all the characters, and I think he could be like a really, really, really amazing character, and we just like yeah. didn't know it. We don't know it yet. Yeah, so, yeah. that's he, how he I remember it. Here, yeah. I'm gonna yeah. say B as well, but mostly based on him being one of the characters in comparison that I know the least about um, currently. I mean, I feel, obviously we feel like all of the characters are adorable or, or hot or cute or like lovable, <laughs> but like they're all amazing characters that are really fleshed out. That's why Seven is so iconic. But as far as Red being is, is the character I know least about, I did freak out playing Remake because I played Remake first and I did not expect him to talk. So that, <laughs> that was a moment for all of us. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would give him an A just because I agree with what everyone's saying, but um, there is like, and I, I'm not going to spoil it, but there's this one scene in the original that just really stands out to me um, that I really like emotionally connected with. Like, I just felt very invested in it. Um, and I also just love like Cosmo Canyon. And like, I don't know. So I just like associate him with that and the music and everything. Uh, so I, I would give him an A personally, but I mostly agree with everything. Yeah, I'm excited to learn more about him and see all of those like scenes in <laughs> Rebirth. Yeah, he's uh, he definitely has. He has as much knowledge as, say, another person has in the game, but he never really stood out as much as. Um, everyone's favorite flower girl but uh it's will be nice to be able to see him more in the forefront and having probably voice acting and all that stuff will help to be able to push those punches of the story because he does have very a very nice backstory and everything like that so uh hopefully mm -hmm. we see that in rebirth um so the next one kate sith no spoilers chat <laughs> No spoilers B's. anymore. B's the lowest we can go. B. <laughs> B's the yeah, lowest we can just, go. I was just thinking that. But we don't know that. yet. Is this the, is the tier list from the original or just remake? <laughs> this is just in remake general. In general. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. We don't know him yet in remake. Yeah, true. We don't know him yet. If you yeah, if you don't if you don't know them yet, then you can say B. <laughs> Y'all. He's Our a yeah. very unique character. <laughs> Definitely unique. I feel like I wore the Kate Sith ears a lot in FFX IV, and like that's an S tier for me. <laughs> there you go. Do it up, Sophie. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh how about Barrett? I thought I had an immediate mm. answer and then I didn't. Let me think about it. I think he's an A for me. I'm gonna go with yeah, A. Yeah, I would say an A. I'm gonna go with A too. Cause I feel like, I think he's so cool, but I also don't necessarily relate to a lot of the things that he went through in the first game. Like, I don't know. It was like, I was a little bit detached from it, but at the same time I was like, yeah, you're super cool. <laughs> I feel like yeah, he's gonna he, shine yeah. more in Rebirth. Yeah. Spofie, you, yeah. You, I think you didn't play the original, right? I just wanna make sure. Mm -mm, just the, re okay, just okay. the first game. I just yeah. wanted to make sure, okay. <laughs> What about you, Munna? No, he's an S. He's an S for me. I'm thinking really deeply on it. I really love Barrett. <laughs> yeah, he's he's an S. He's fantastic. Heck yeah. I keep I keep trying to keep my ratings like to like what we like what we haven't learned so far in Rebirth. If I include I, what I know hard. from like overall, I would call him an S tier because I know where his story goes. Yeah, um, that's true. But that's true. As yeah. I currently, as he's currently presented for people who've just played remake, I would say A. But I really relate to Barrett because I'm a parent of a child right around the age of Marlene. So this guy's super emotional. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> going through, like, going oh. through like what they're going through while also being responsible for a child. Ugh, ugh, the chills, the pain. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. S tier of considering everything. Looking. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm oh, gonna do the same as you. 
I'm kind of the same as you though with like my love for Barrett but like as the child like that's like I view him as like the parental figure so yeah opposite (laughs) yeah Barrett is always a bright shining light um it it definitely was hard to get a handle on him at first because when you first meet him like he's trying to put cloud in his place in remake he's like you're you're gonna do this job we're gonna save the planet we're gonna do this. everything's gonna be great and then you're like <laughs> later down the line and then when they start loosening up and the whole character roster um starts loosening up there it is definitely something special s for mm. special <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> all right so since we're on the topic of something that's kind of close to seventh heaven tifa s S. 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 Triple S. 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 Quadruple S. 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 I'm a huge fan of Tifa as a character, especially because I don't know if it's worth mentioning, but like I didn't actually like her in remake, and I feel like I owe her for that. Oh no. Whoa! Can you like without spoilers? Can you speak? Yeah, I was gonna say, can you speak on that without spoilers? Uh, without understanding her motivations, and, like, obviously not everyone's going to have the same experience with the game, but without understanding her motivations or her backstory, I absorbed a lot of Tifa's actions in Remake as, like, as, like, friend, like, like, the neighbor, the girl from, like, the small neighborhood that thinks she's super hot because everybody has a crush on her. And because everybody does, but, like, she knows it, but, like, she kind of acts like she doesn't. And that's just how I was reading her her actions. That's not necessarily say that's why, um, but that's why I was just kind of like, I don't know. I think I felt like that was the reason that she treated and talked to Cloud that the way that the way that she did. Um, and I wasn't really for it at the time. Or it could have been jealousy. I don't know. She's super hot. So. <laughs> <laughs> she's hot. She's kind. She's strong. <laughs> What's not to love? <laughs> <laughs> there's like something about tifa's theme that i think my brain just goes blank when it comes on i'm like i love you i don't know what you're saying but <laughs> i'm crying for some reason <laughs> it's definitely her theme is definitely has the older i get has hit me harder than normal because at first it's always like a, another character's theme um everyone should know which characters i'm talking about at this point but when i went to see the final fantasy 7 orchestra it wasn't that other character's main theme song. It was Tifa, where I was just like, <laughs> like <laughs> it's just such a beautiful, uh, beautiful song, and you can just hear how like soft and innocent it is, and how like it just resonates Tifa's personality the more you listen to it. And so, yeah, it's definitely, definitely a theme for the for the eye sockets of tears. <laughs> but. Since eye sockets. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, since uh, they are definitely going to be in rebirth, what about Biggs? Huh. <laughs> I I would say A. I think I think I would say B, <laughs> mainly just because. I don't know much about him. Yeah, maybe maybe B. No, you're right. But I love him. I him he's adorable. Yeah, he's really nice, but <laughs> but I want to know more. He's really nice. Plus, are we friend zoning him? Like what? <laughs> I'm very interested to see what is going on with Biggs. Um, and maybe he's going to be the villain because he's too nice. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, no. Did you find it, Kylie? <laughs> no, I, no. 
Uh-huh. What about <laughs> Hojo? In a perspective of, of the character, not your feelings towards Hojo. <laughs> oh, what, just like his design? The bottom. <laughs> Z. Yeah. Z. Z. Yeah. yeah. Z. Z. Negative Z. Look at them, you feel an oily disgust. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that sums yes. it up. <laughs> because you only have to look at him to be like, gross. Disgusting. <laughs> yes. You're a snake. <laughs> this is an example of the word disgust. That's yeah. 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 We should put his face in the dictionary. Just disgust. Oh, okay. I see it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. S tier hatred. Yes. <laughs> I had to specify that one because I knew everyone's gonna go like with new letters of the alphabet. <laughs> 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 but it but it's for a good thing. It's always good to have a great person like Hojo to make you put them in Z. <laughs> great. Yeah. yeah. Good job mm -hmm. at that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They He's great for that letter. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who else? So mm, we kind of already talked about how we feel about Yuffie and Vincent, so I'm going to leave them out of the tier list temporarily. Um, what about... Cloud. S. 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 A. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A for me right now. A. Ooh. Okay. I can't. Okay. I can't right. because of because I can't, I can't because of what I know. And mm -hmm. and there's a reason why I put Zach in S and Cloud in A. And I'm very confident in that. Yeah. I can't I, I can't explain because spoilers. But if you know, you know. Yeah. I'm uh, interested to know Spofi, since she's only played the remake, why you put Cloud in A. I think it just yeah. takes me a while to open up to moody Final Fantasy Pro tags. Um, yeah. Like, yeah, it just it's just going to take me the whole game, I think. That's fair. That's fair. I, I I'm high. Sometimes. I'm... He is pretty moody. Yeah, he's, he's, a, little, he's a little sassy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely biased. That that man is like the toppest of the tier list for me. I am just biased as all who get out. Um I'm laughing at chat being like A for the mere sin of not being Zach. <laughs> oh, That's what I'm saying. I think if That's Zach true. is like S plus 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 S tier, like you know, like more than S, and then I think of Cloud as S, if that makes sense. Yeah. But yeah, I, that's like I cheating. That. I don't know. I, <laughs> that's cheating. It's not cheating. It's good. I just need a triple S category and then the S, because I, I understand yeah. what you mean. No, yeah. I think yeah. with, with this entire round table, I think there's a Zach category, and then there's everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it yeah. like. Except Spofi is like, I don't know who that guy is. <laughs> well, I'm so intrigued now, though, because like I obviously avoided spoilers, but just hearing the way that everybody talks about him, I'm like, who is this man? Why does he have a stranglehold on everybody? I hope we're not overhyping him. No, I'm about to like. I mean, about Graha Tia in 14. I was like, why do you care? I mean, here's the thing. I'm still very new to like Seven as a whole in the universe. Like, I only played Crisis Core when like the the remake of it came out, essentially. Um, but. Yeah, he was not a character that I was expecting to love so much. Like, I didn't think anything of him originally. But because, again, going back to that game, I and mean, then obviously, like, the original Seven, like, yeah, he's a very unexpected character that I fell in love with. I think it's interesting how we... This is an if-you-know-you-know -know situation, how it all leads back to Zach. Even when talking about yeah. other things. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what about Aerith? S. 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 We love Aerith. I still I'm like Tifa. I like Tifa more. <laughs> okay, okay. I was. I don't want to keep going back to Crisis Core. S and Crisis Core. <laughs> <laughs> but like overall a okay i I'll, i'm i need to stop talking about crisis core but as the crisis core a overall just because i yeah i just i love tifa I so much so i 
I separate the Aerith from Crisis Core and Remake than the Aerith from the original. They feel like different characters to me, so it's a bit odd. Um, as I as I know her now, as like the impression I know her now, I would give her an S tier. Um, but but also I put, I like put her on the line between A and F. I would say. I think when you learn more about her, she's definitely an S tier. I know for some people she's an S tier regardless. So it just mm-hmm. depends on you. And Spothy. Yeah, I think um both Tifa and Aerith, like having just played the remake, you're kind of left in a place where you're like, okay, like I, I have like an idea of what's going on now, but you can tell that there's so much more to it that it's almost hard to like pass any judgment on either of them because there's like such this, I mean, obviously it's Cloud and his story and whatever, but like you can obviously tell that a huge part of it is about Tifa and Aerith's story. And I just don't know where that's going to go. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm like always interested to see like Spofi's opinion because right? she only right. has remakes. So I'm just like, oh, interesting. Um, yeah. <laughs> for, for me, I did not like Aerith when I played the original that much. I was a Tifa girl. But when I played remake, I fell in love with Aerith. Absolutely. Um, I think it's because like I understand the perspective of her and what her story is and how it's going. Uh, and where it could possibly lead in Rebirth. But there is something about Aerith to me that stood out to the point where she's just, without spoiling anything, she definitely crafts the characters you love the most to being the best versions of themselves. Yeah. And so I love characters when they do that to be able for us to love the other characters. And so I didn't really get that when playing the original. So then I see that in her in remake. And so that's why I was like, I'm now an Aerith girly. I'm a everybody girly, but <laughs> I now I now actually can't be like, oh, you know, it's Aerith, whatever. <laughs> but it's just yeah. like, no, I think uh I think once you realize her whole story and her whole like purpose and everything. Yeah, she definitely flew off the tier list for me. So I'm looking forward to seeing her in Rebirth because of that. Yeah, I think think it's so interesting. Go ahead, go go ahead. (laughs) That like we can have such complex feelings about these characters. And I'm like thinking to myself, I'm like, when I played Remake, I actually liked Aerith a lot more than I liked Tifa in terms of just general personality. But personally, like I don't feel any like kinship or like relatability. I don't feel like my personality is, and my motivations and thoughts are nowhere near Eris. And because of that, that just lowers her in my mind because I'm like, she's someone that I admire, but I don't feel I can like relate to. And even though like I liked Tifa less when I played Remake, I do relate to her a little bit more. So she was like a little bit higher on like the tier list in general. But it's so cool that Square can like make these characters for us that like we feel these complex emotions about um, yeah. across this mm-hmm. whole franchise. So I actually think it's funny you say that because i was literally about to say that i like Aerith because i relate to her <laughs> like i find that she's kind of like kind of quiet and like um maybe like a little socially awkward and takes like a lot for her to come out of her shell um she seems pretty comfortable with like cloud though but i feel like i i definitely relate to Aerith a lot more than i do tifa so that's really funny <laughs> Yeah, okay. I think I, I think I loved her a lot when she picked up the chair and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that was a turning so point. Exciting. <laughs> uh, so I'm not sure if Spofi will be able to speak on this character, but I have to add them to the list because of my bias. Uh, um, but Sid? Hmm. Hello? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Go quiet. I'm not gonna like I'm my answer. I'm trying answers. to decide. <laughs> Joy is my best just... friend. I don't, don't want her to disown me, but B. Yeah. I I didn't I didn't like Sid <laughs> when I was first introduced to him. It's been it's mm-hmm. been through more story and variety that I've like. I am interested to see how he will be portrayed in yeah. Rebirth because when you meet him in OG, again, no spoilers, because there's no voice acting or anything like that, you kind of interpret, it's kind of like reading somebody's text when they don't have emojis or LOLs. <laughs> like, 
he was really grumpy and i was just like me you're so grumpy and like i think when he's voice acted that could be like like an endearing grumpy but i was definitely reading it as like butthead grumpy i like the game so that's why he's b tier for me i need to learn more about him i know that i know that he's joyce one of joyce's favorite characters and i respect that so much i i understand he's not everyone's cup of tea <laughs> but yeah <laughs> Yeah. Um, is B the uh, lowest? Yeah. That we're doing. Yeah, Z I would rank for Hojo. B. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I would just use B the B. lowest. But it. I don't like. I think I'm going to like him in Rebirth. Like, I, I definitely think he's going to be more likable to me in Rebirth. But I'm the same way. Um, I felt like um, in the original. I felt like he was just kind of mean. <laughs> like, well, maybe not like to the party, but like like to I, I forget her name. There was like a, a woman oh, that yes. he was very mean to. The I did not assistant. like that. It just really rubbed me the wrong way. Um, but I think he'll be better in rebirth for me. So Yeah. I hope so. He's a B for me too, for that exact reason. I didn't really yeah. like I didn't like how he treated and that, like what Jahara said, I, you can't really understand the emotion behind the text as it wasn't voice acted. So mm -hmm. hopefully that changes in Rebirth. We'll be able to hear him, and maybe it'll be yeah. different. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised Sarah gave him a B since he's in Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> well, well, yeah, sure. In Kingdom Hearts, <laughs> like he's, he's actually really Sid Highwind in Kingdom Hearts is like ten out of ten. But he's nice. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm just messing with you. Um, I know. <laughs> he, he, is our, he is my favorite Sid. I will say that. He is... No, I'm sorry. He's my second favorite Sid. Yeah. Not of all Sids. He's my second favorite Sid. I love Final <laughs> Fantasy 16 Sid so much. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I like 14 Sid, too. Yeah. Sid. <laughs> I was thinking of 14 Sid. Yeah. Ah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, li I like his cranky, angry old man vo vibes and yeah, just this brashness. So he's he's an A for me. So I'm excited for him. I, I like I like the mean characters. <laughs> yeah. And then I think the last one for the character tier list. Sephiroth. I mean, it's in his name. An S. Yeah, <laughs> it is true. Yeah. S for Sephiroth. Best for Sephiroth. He invented the letter, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> He's a great villain. He, he really is a, is great, a great villain. villain. Yeah. He's a sexy S villain. It's, I mean, I feel like the 60-inch bust down that he's got going already gives him an S. Besides, character aside. So much hair. <laughs> so much so hair. It's very nice. Even in, like, in the, in the Rebirth demo... Like, you just see, like, every single strand of his hair. Yeah. I'm just like, ooh, it looks so soft. I want to touch it. <laughs> Do you That's take honestly, biotin supplements? <laughs> That's honestly my favorite part about Final Fantasy, especially, like, the, the graphics and the CGI. But, I mean, in this, he looks beautiful. It's always the hair. How the hair looks in all the cutscenes. They have just, like, mastered hair. So, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Spofy, what about you? <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean i don't have like like character wise i feel like i don't have a ton other like because it was just kind of starting with the remake but yeah i mean in the rebirth demo and the trailer he was he was looking pretty good i'm not gonna lie <laughs> <laughs> so i'm i'm excited we can do an s for uh looking forward to more sephiroth <laughs> i guess <laughs> did anyone get <laughs> ever crisis with his short hair Mm, yeah, I know what deal. I've seen a screenshot, but I've never played it. I love short hair Sephiroth too. <laughs> he can rock both. Maybe. He should also, be growing it short. Maybe then all of that trauma will go away. It'll be a little bit nicer. I have to give a <laughs> shout out hair. to um, Scarlet because she's my wife, even though she's horrible. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Scarlet's amazing. Scarlet. <laughs> I love her so much. I love her yeah, theme too. Scarlet. We'll definitely come back to characters, but that was just a little fun thing because uh, I will say Final Fantasy VII has by far some of the greatest cast members ever invented in gaming history, at least in my opinion. And so even if you dislike a character or like a character, there's just they're just so, so well written. And so it's really hard to like really list them. But we, of course, everyone has their favorites. Um, 
on the topic of characters, we're going to be getting some summons happening in Rebirth. Um, we were going to do a summon tier list, but there's so many. And then I don't know if we know every summon that's going to be in Rebirth at this time. So I will do a whole roundabout thing and just asking everyone, like, what summons they like the best in seven. So we're keeping it in seven, not like other Final Fantasies, because they kind of overlap, but some don't. Um, what's your favorite seven summon? And what, if you haven't heard anything yet, who do you hope to be in Rebirth? I am always a Shiva stan, so... <laughs> uh I agree with Spilf. I'm going to have to go with Shiva in this one. I didn't actually engage with the summons as much in 7 mm -hmm. as I did in some of the other titles, but knowing some of them that are there, I love Shiva. Wherever she appears, she is my queen. So, yeah, I'm going to have to go with Shiva being, like, my top summon. I'm excited to see her. We're going to hug. <laughs> She'll try and kill me, you know. <laughs> I don't, whichever. <laughs> Odin. Odin, Odin, Odin in every game. Oh, I love there, Odin. I'm excited. He is, mm. he is my king. I love him so much. So, yeah. Odin. <laughs> I'm bone Kylie? with Odin right now. Uh, I'm still oh, wait, thinking. I feel like I'm, wait. Too. <laughs> I need to know. Now I have to talk to you about eight because I, I feel like I know. <laughs> I think Shiva for me, too. Um, and this is kind of silly, but I also like the this is just um, seven. Actually, I don't know if this is in the original, but I think it's a Moogle summon. <laughs> or is it? Is it a Moogle or a Chocobo? I can't remember. There's like a really cute summon in Seven Remake that I was using. There is a Chocobo. I know what you mean. Yeah. Is it the fat Chocobo? I think, I think maybe. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, I'm very like, like anything yeah. cute. Oh, yeah, but the Chocobo like Mog that. thing. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. Bahamut. Zero? Bahamut Zero? Bahamut? Yeah. <laughs> I think he looks freaking cool. Yeah. Bahamut's always cool. Yeah. Bahamut's always cool. Baha bro. Baha bro. Yeah. My favorite summon was in the original, but if it showed up in Rebirth, I would freak out because it was the most cinematic experience <laughs> you can possibly imagine, and that was Knights of the Round Table. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah. 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 So it would be nice if they brought them in rebirth, maybe. Oh, that would be huge. That would be so cool to see, actually. Yeah, it's just like so far we have seen so many different cool ones. And so definitely looking forward to seeing what you can find out in the world, the big world that is rebirth that is definitely coming out in a few days. And I'm getting nervous. I'm so excited. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but. For going back to characters, out of all the characters in the Final Fantasy VII universe, which character had the most impact on you and why? Without spoilers. <laughs> mm. That's hard. That's a hard one. It's hard without spoilers. Yes, yeah, exactly. A, that yeah. one, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know exactly who it is and why. But there's just no way to explain it without spoilers. Yeah. Um, Same. So let me, I'm like, maybe this. Can we second, say just the, the character, character the and then just say, like, look forward to it in Rebirth? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, if, it, if it's. In rebirth, yeah, we don't know. Oh, but, true. Yeah. Um. Like a character, if you know, you know. <laughs> right. Or like, okay, well then, since it's really hard to like go into into detail without spoilers, what about um the character that had the most impact in like in, that had the most impact, and how they make you feel versus like why they had an impact on you. <laughs> That's what the uh, ultimate yeah. spoiler for me. I have, <laughs> Dang I have, it! I can give you a character that has the second most impact on me because it's and and the reason because it's weird. It's not like spoilery too much or anything. Maybe it is. Okay. Gosh darn it, that's so hard. Yeah, it's hard. Ooh, I I'll um, say. Oh. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. 
Uh, without spoilers, I would say Red. I feel like I relate to his story on an emotional level. Um, I feel very seen. He makes me feel very seen with his story. At least in the original. I don't know if it's going to change or not. I hope it doesn't. Uh, but I feel like I relate to Red the most. He makes me feel seen. That's a good example of how to say things without spoiling. <laughs> yeah, that was. Mm -hmm. I well, tried. I would say mine's automatically non-spoiler, so I can just get it out of the way. <laughs> um, I think it would probably be Aerith for me, just because I don't usually like connect with characters that have like a higher purpose or just are like seem kind of angelic in a way, which I guess like is how she kind of came across to me in a lot of ways in in remake. Um, but like the game just does a really good job of like making you feel a lot of empathy towards her without even like saying things, you know? Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. Dang, this question got us all super introspective. We're just like, <laughs> I know. It feels like a, feels yeah. like a therapy session. I need to dig deep without spoiling it. Um, Okay, I have two answers. One, one I can give you zero context on, and the other one I can give you a bit more context on. We talked about it. First one, Zach, if you know, you know. Uh, second one, Barrett. I would say Barrett, and again for uh, similar to the reason that I mentioned before, um, I relate a lot to characters. I feel like in a lot of these RPGs, especially like with with House Grey Enix, has kind of made their parties. There's always like the like sort of teenaged or like young adult part of the party and then there's like the adults in the party that have something a bit more at stake usually like through like experience or like any sort of like um parental or elder sort of feeling and i feel like barrett is that character especially because he has marlene and because he has marlene i really felt and like what is at stake and how she comes into play in some of the scenes really gave me that extra layer of like worry for Barrett and like what was going on in the story mm. and not even like for his safety in general but be for like what were if what happened to him what could happen to him therefore like what could happen to her things like that and from a parental perspective I really relate to him he's also the only black character in the game I part out loud <laughs> like so mm -hmm. he really he really mattered to me in that way You did it. Emotional. That was good. That was really good. Yeah, uh, mine is Zach. Um, but I also feel like... I feel like every character has impacted me in some way. Or most of them, at least. We even were saying, like, Hojo impacts us negatively. So, uh, yeah. I, I guess, like... I'll just say Zach, but I won't elaborate. Just really love him. <laughs> we should all just do this. He makes again you when feel loved. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I've been a super the spoiler one. Because we really want to talk about him. It's very clear. We do. We really want yeah. to. <laughs> we do. But we can't right now, so just understand. Yeah. <laughs> and Midna, if you. <laughs> I mean, I'm in the same boat. It's it's Zach, but then also Cloud. But it be, it's relating to Zach, and I don't want to go on about it. That's that's it. Just Zach. Everything's Zach. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me, it would be Tifa. Um, it's Tifa for me because she has her internal struggle of should I do something or should I not do something and or I want to do good at something but then I don't want the repercussions of things that could possibly happen uh which is in the um remake in this sense so it's uh Spo if you should understand what I'm talking about where it's like she was always just like I really got to do this but I really don't want to um but yeah that's just like I've always related to Tifa because I feel like we're in the similar vein like when you understand her path in original, it's just like 
oh, I am that kind of girl that she is, where it's just like everyone everyone puts her up here, but then she puts herself down here. Um, so it's like that kind of impact where it's like everyone's always like, oh, this is like Tifa's the best. Tifa, not saying that people say this about me, but it's like a relatable thing in some instances. <laughs> Uh, (laughs) 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 but it's just like that thing where like i think everybody especially as content creators have had that situation where people have always put us higher in some certain certain aspects but then you always put yourself lower so she represents to me the the imposter syndrome or the insecurity Mm -hmm. of the thing when in all reality she is the baddest of the baddie um just like everyone here in this round table so it's just like um that's why (laughs) that's why she impacts me the most because i see myself in her because i do what tifa does all the time that's relatable as heck yeah Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) now that i'm like shoot i want to change my answer i was gonna (laughs) (laughs) um but we have about like i think the last topic which is a big one um will take us the rest of our time here but we can go off and talk off of each other but why is now the best time to get into final fantasy <sighs> that's so such a big reasons. question yeah there's so uh, many reasons why? final fantasy as a whole final, final well, fantasy, six seven. fantasy seven okay seven okay Mm. I, I have an answer I can put forth in my opinion. So I think it kind of relates to a lot of what we were saying before, where a lot of us originally, we hear from our communities that are really Final Fantasy focused, that 7 is a really iconic game, especially those of us that started with 14, right? And But we are used to like a higher level of, of graphic. And like some people might, might look down on that, but I feel like it's just, it's, a pretty universal experience for a lot of people who have started gaming more recently or are just used to playing games that are a bit um, newer in general. And so like, I can understand the deterrent, but like I played remake first because it felt more relatable to me visually, but playing remake. And when I went to play it, I said, I don't plan on playing the original. Like I was pretty vehement about that. I was like, I think this will do what I need. Like I'm going to learn this story. It's going to be good. But I finished remake and I was like, just kidding. I'm playing original immediately. Like I needed, it really like encourages you to go back and see how the original story is told because they are different. They are. And it's a completely different experience to play, to play both. And I feel like now that the rebirth is there, you, you, I don't think there's anything wrong with just playing Remake and Rebirth, but I think if you were to play both, that you would feel encouraged to play the original. Even if you didn't, like, we, there's going to be a third installment, and then you'll have the whole story. And it, it, it's iconic for a reason. Like, we can all be hipsters about it and be like, but is it really that good? Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. it is. <laughs> like, there's a reason so many people love the series as beloved. Before I knew anything about Final Fantasy, I knew the names Cloud, Aerith, and Tifa. I yeah. knew those character names before knowing yeah. anything about mm-hmm. Seven yeah. because they're just so iconic in that way. So mm-hmm. now yeah. with, this, with this available to everybody, I think it's just such a good time. I mean, there, there's Rebirth, there's Remake, there's Crisis Core Reunion, there's Ever Crisis. Like, if you don't want to play the original at this point, you really don't have to to still get the full story through a modern lens, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. It's so interesting too off that Jahar because I feel like playing the remake almost like creates nostalgia for you to go back and play the original because you have that basis for connection to the characters and like that's sometimes what's hard going back to older games is like just getting past that initial like I don't know who any of these people are like you know. Um, I will say for me too, um, kind of like Midna, I was a Nintendo girly like growing up. I never played like I didn't have a PlayStation, so I I wasn't able to play PlayStation games. Um, And so there are some challenges for me when it comes to like even just like PlayStation controllers and getting used to them as an adult. Um, And I still remember when I sat down to play the FF7 remake demo for the first time, I was just amazed by how quickly everything clicked. Like they just I, I don't know how or why, but they did a really good job of making it really comfortable, even if you're not like super familiar with um like controller setups and stuff 
I also feel like going back to what Jahara was saying is there's so many games out. Like we have Crisis Core that was remastered. I believe that game was on the PSP. Not everybody had a PSP back then. So you can yeah. dive into the lore of that game. You have, um, obviously you have Remake, Rebirth is coming out. So you're able to uh, play the same st story. You'll be able to play the story um, now where back then it was probably a lot harder to get to. So I feel like now, now that they've been able to... Um, modernize uh i guess some of the games to be able to 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 in, envelop your uh just i guess enrich your experience in the game i feel like that would that that's like a really good reason why you can now now that you can jump into that um it makes it a good reason to jump in now because they have that or they don't have that in the back and back then also they're releasing advent children in movie in the movie theaters which i never i'm gonna go do i want to go watch that i didn't know that uh i never knew about the movie until recently and i feel like that's cool that they're putting more uh, like marketing behind behind it so that we can have a better experience when we play rebirth so that's cool i don't know when avid children was in theaters if it ever was did y'all ever see it back in the day I've yeah. seen it, yeah. <laughs> I haven't I seen it at all. <laughs> the I saw it the, the day it launched in the theater. I, I oh, see, that's cool. Before I even played anything Final Fantasy VII, because uh, my friend uh, had me watch it with her when we were in, like, middle school, but I had, like, no context. <laughs> huh. I think a, a good reason to even play the remake series is, I mean, you sh I ask myself the question, or you could ask yourself the question of, like, why this Final Fantasy is getting the remake, because I know there's a lot of debate and discussion on, like, which other Final Fantasies get the remake treatment, but, like, there's a reason why Seven was chosen for it. There's a reason why they're fleshing out the story, um, and I think that in itself is a good enough reason to see what the story is about and understand why it's so iconic and has so many iconic characters. Like, I I think out of all of the Final Fantasy titles, Seven is going to be the most well-known. So, like, like Jahara said, like, before she even, you know, dove into Seven or really any Final Fantasy, she knew the characters of, like, Cloud, Tifa, Aerith. Like, they are very well-known. And there is a reason for that. So, yeah. And, I mean, the game plays phenomenally it has such a good combat system i think it's um very nice that they have the like atp gauge system because not a lot of people like the turn-based combat but they do sprinkle that in there as like a nod to the original and then you have the real-time action combat which is super cool and it's just so smooth it's so beautiful it's just yeah it's it's a game that you should just play not anything related to seven it's just a fantastic game so yeah, it's kind of hard to like add on because um, I agree with all of what has been said and I was going to say a lot of similar stuff. Um, I think that Remake and what I've played of Rebirth so far does a really good job at while adding a lot of new things and maybe changing some things. I think it just does such a good job at like capturing the essence of the original seven. Like. The way I could describe it is like when you play an older game when you're a kid and you you kind of almost like have to use your imagination a little bit because, you know, the graphics weren't as good back then and you'll remember it to look a lot better than it did. I feel like what they did with like Remake and Rebirth is it looks how like I would have imagined it to look if I played it when I was a kid, like when it first came out. Um, I mean, I was, like, too young to play it, I guess, but, um, and, because, like, I guess, like, a good example would be, like, when I played, like, Crash Bandicoot as a kid, like, the remake looks like how I imagined it when I was a kid. I don't know if that makes sense. No, it does. Yeah, I mean, no, no, yeah. no, it totally sense. does. Yeah, that's... For me, like, a weird, like, metaphor for that is, like, if you, like, watch, like, anime in Japanese. And like mm -hmm. with subtitles but then you like remember it you, like you in your head they're like speaking in english because that's how you're going to remember the words so it's almost yeah. like how like you, whatever like in, in imagination you're like injecting into the game as you play it with the older graphics like they've somehow I feel like they like went into like my actual head and be like and pulled it out because i'm like yeah that's that's how it looked to me <laughs> honestly i don't know 
Yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. They did a great job. They honestly. did such a good job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I guess to add on to all of this, it's it's the whole aspect of combining people um, that have never even touched a Final Fantasy and combining people that have played the original the day it came out or those that have just seen stuff on the outside everybody is waiting and anticipating this installment and the next installment after that without understanding what's going to happen so it's always hard to jump into a fandom or like anything that's very very popular when you don't know where to start and it seems intimidating in that sense but at this point, the topic of discussions where it'd be newcomers or old comers, I think the Final Fantasy community as a whole is just, we don't know what's going to happen. And it'd be good for anyone looking into getting into Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy in general right now. Like if you are very interested into the JRPG world, this is now your your time to be able to jump in conversations and social media or meet friends that are probably playing the game at the same time. And it's just, it really, it's weird. Like this is, at the end of the day, this is just a video game, but with the lead up to Rebirth and this game coming out, it doesn't feel like it's just a video game. Like it right. feels like it's, like this movement where everyone's like anticipating it's like i can't believe this is finally happening like it was a little bit like that with when the first installment remake came out because it was announced in like 2015 or even before that and then it took years for it to finally arrive but seeing like everybody just so excited and like final fantasy seems like the final fantasy 7 specifically seems like the only final fantasy that can jump out of the people that have no like that don't play jrpgs And it's such a well-known thing. So it's such a good time to jump in and not feel like you're like, oh, I don't know anything. Because you don't have to know anything to play Rebirth in a few days. You can Mm -hmm. just go in and play Rebirth because if you just played Remake, that is a game in its whole. It has a beginning, middle, and end. And it's just like, it may get you to go somewhere else. But yeah, it's just... I don't know. I was like, I thought it was just me. And then everyone's like, yeah, it doesn't feel like just a video game. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. I was like, no. I feel like I'm like prepping to like go on like this massive trip. I'm like, do I yeah. got snacks? Do I have this? <laughs> like, what, what can I do? <laughs> it's but life. Yeah. Yeah. Final Fantasy VII is life. <laughs> it really yeah. is. Good point. You have a good point because it's like when when you jump onto something when like there's this huge buzz of popularity around it as well. Like obviously you can like start a new book or start a new game whenever you want, but it is fun to do it when there's a bunch of people around that you want that are like really willing to talk about it with you and also like really excited. So like you can join in and then like everywhere you like everyone's gonna be like you're playing too. I'm playing. Let's talk about it. Like it's like you get to like join the book club when everyone like when it like revamped itself <laughs> all of us are really excited so join in on the excitement and you can pretty much start anywhere you want to at this point i feel like they've done a really good job of making them really seamless you can start from original you can start from rebirth or remake i feel like we've all kind of conceded that like some of us played original first some of us played remake first or remake only and we still all really enjoy what we've played so far so mm-hmm. just jump on it I don't think you'll have a bad experience no matter which way you choose to do it. Yeah. It's like the most accessible it's ever been. They have a, um, uh, I, I didn't jump into the demo, but I'm pretty sure they have like a recap, right? In Rebirth for people that may want to understand Remake. Yeah, I think Correct I saw that. I didn't click on it, but. Yeah. It is yeah. a voice by Red 13's voice actor, and yeah. he takes you through. It's a really, really well done. I definitely watched it because I'm, I'm doing my remake replay just to like get refreshed before Rebirth. And so I was like, let's see what they say. Uh, but I know that's also available on YouTube because they released it a while ago. It's called The Story So Far. So if anyone yeah. is definitely interested and didn't have time to get to play the remake, but you really want to play Rebirth, like it's a story so far is really, really well done. And you can get the idea of what remake is about. Good to know. I didn't know that. I'm gonna Mm. I'm gonna watch that. (laughs) I'm gonna have to watch it too. I have a really hard time remembering. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I've been trying to finish hard mode and I don't know if I'll be able to in time, so (laughs) hard mode is fun. It it is fun. I think I think like 
it's I always play games on the hardest difficulty and then hard mode wasn't unlocked until after you beat it. Oh yeah. Uh, but it's done in such a nice, unique way. Uh, mm -hmm. where it's not just like the enemies have so much health. It's like you can't yes. heal. Right. <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> the only way you can heal is if you find a bench. And it's just like it makes you think more strategically like how original did and any turn based game did, where it's like you need to make sure you're well prepared for this moment. And it's like, yeah, it's an action game, but you still had like those tactics of playing a turn based game. So I really enjoyed it. And then they also definitely like added new things to certain bosses, like a certain house <laughs> a certain house <laughs> nothing suspicious about yes. the house mm -hmm. it reminds no. me of Ella, what Smokey said that like even if you're not particularly like because when I played remake I actually had never really played action based games I know it's not fully action but like I was like coming from like not like combat based games at all so i was really intimidated by that but it's pretty easy to pick up like and there are various levels like you can get to hard mode but even like i think back on my playthrough and i did struggle a bit because i wasn't used to like utilizing different like techniques and things like that but like the game does teach you how to play it and like how to fight and like you'll get your way through it's not unfair in any way shape or form and i i think the combat was really well done it was really engaging and accessible so yeah I'm excited I think to see it in rebirth in a really elegant way where it like kind of like slows down and lets you make some decisions because I was stressed about that too I was like oh gosh it's gonna be a lot all at once <laughs> yeah the nice thing about mm -hmm. the ATV gauge system is because it slows everything down you can kind of have that quick breather and like almost mm -hmm. recollect and be like okay what do I do mm -hmm. from here like or yeah. if you yeah. don't even need to use a skill you just essentially use it as like kind of a pause and then you go back into combat so yeah it's really awesome i always like yeah. entering into slow-mo but then also seeing my character about to get sliced i've caught my characters doing some wacky poses like you know mid animation i'm just like huh okay so that's how they did it <laughs> I had a really funny moment where I was like summoning Shiva in the original game and I paused to like choose a skill and it was just like her boobs on the whole screen. And I was like, ah, that was not on purpose. I oh man. Now I'm just thinking about just ex playing the game, just experiencing it and just like everything that all... happened. Are you welcome yeah. day one? Like release, like jumping right in? Yep. Are we, are we waiting at all? Okay. Absolutely <laughs> not. I can't wait. I'm already, I've already <laughs> suffered so long <laughs> waiting. I have to get into that as much yeah. as possible. But I am going to take my time. I'm not, yeah. I usually go overboard when it comes to games I'm really excited for. So I am going to just like take it one day at a time and just be Same. like, all right. I want to no, no 5000 hour streams for me. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so curious how cuz I I've, I've I've tried to avoid as much as I could, but I've been I really want to see what the different cities/towns look like cuz I haven't seen that mm -hmm. yet. I want to I want to like really look around when the game comes out at the new uh just cuz I remember how they were in the original and they're just pixelated so now like being able to see like the graphics how updated they are i'm like ooh, what does nibelheim look like now <laughs> i'm curious so, no i agree with you i want to take I'm my time little... <laughs> i'm honestly a little intimidated by it kylie because i feel like the time that we're gonna like want to spend fully exploring each area when the game is already so large i'm just like i'm gonna be playing this game for the rest of the yeah game. Oh, help me <laughs> like, yeah there's yeah. gonna be a lot <laughs> it's gigantic yeah yeah without like i i'm not gonna say like anything in detail but they did just showcase like a lot of amazing things that you'll be able to do in rebirth and I know both Sarah and I are trying to like erase it from our memories because of all the stuff that they showed. But <laughs> literally playing this game until like 2026 at this point because it's so massive and it's, I want to like go through every little corner. I want to like make sure I don't miss anything or any cues because there's like people like looking at in the demo looking at posters in the background that are like hints or not hints but like 
reminiscence of like the original Easter and stuff eggs? like that yeah um, that's the right word yeah i love um, that oh i hope i find I, one <laughs> i didn't know but i was watching someone else play and i didn't know that in um seventh heaven in the back at the top there's a picture or like i think it's in the back there's a picture of the original seventh heaven like just hung up on the wall i didn't know that Oh, and so I, I didn't I was know like, that either. I didn't know yeah, that no. either. Y'all, y'all don't be. I want to go that. see it. <laughs> and so now I'm like, now I'm gonna be looking at pictures. I'm gonna be looking at grass. I'm like, does this grass have a picture of? Is there a piece of Sephiroth's hair in this grass? Was he here? Like, there's just so much in the game, and I cannot wait. I'm looking forward to the mini games. I hope they're easier than the original was. Gosh dang, some of those, like the, the that one, oh the God. marching band one. Oh, that oh was so difficult. So fun. so fun. I'm excited. <laughs> the pull ups. Oh, yeah. <laughs> squats and pull ups. Uh, squatting. Squats and stuff. Oh, mm-hmm. my gosh. Uh, squats. It looks like there's going to be a <laughs> lot of mini games in Rebirth. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. Yay. Like the gold saucer aside, like that's one thing, but there's also so many outside as well. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is crazy because there are some video games that are essentially just like a big bucket of mini games. So I was like, I feel like that in and of itself is like a whole separate game where you can just play a bunch of mini games. And they do mention that like what I, what I'm excited for is that like you, the story progress doesn't really affect a lot of the mini games. Some of them it does, Mm -hmm. but like there's so many that you can just go back to over and over and over again. And like, I think that's really nice. I think that increases the replayability of the game as well. So that and like the gold saucer. Day. There's so many things. This game is going to be absolutely massive. I sh- I start to like sweat when I think about it a little bit. I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so like I'm telling you, it's that lifestyle. You have your like packing <laughs> lists of like what you need for rebirth. Like it's just the game, Joy. But no, it's not. <laughs> Like I gotta make sure. What if I need tissues? I don't know. We don't know yet. It's we don't an know experience. anything. It's not yeah. just the game. It's the full experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Uh, so uh, I guess we still have some time. And if there's anything that you all want to talk about that we have not discussed, we can just freeform anything. We've we've hit all the amazing topics so far today and i want to make sure that everyone gets all of their final fantasy 7 gospel speak <laughs> oh i was like i heard jahara i see jahara talking but i didn't hear but i hear you now oh i wasn't actually it was like back of my throat laughing <laughs> <laughs> mm. i'm like trying to think of what else we can talk about that's like not spoilery oh i have an, i i'm kind of curious from i don't think if like if you can speak to it and without like go- delving into like where that place is it, it makes me think of what kylie said is there a specific place in rebirth that you're most excited to see rendered because i have a couple um oh, yeah. without like saying where i'm because i wasn't sure before like they'd shown us what they've shown us like where how far we're going to go into the story because they're really fleshing everything out like they're really <laughs> fleshing stuff out but like one of my favorite places in original was Cosmo Canyon. And I just am excited to see how they've chosen to render that particular place. And I'd love to hear from our chats as well. If I want to chime in, like just not like all of the spoilers, but why, but like, where do you want to see? And I'm just like, Cosmo Canyon. I didn't know if we were going to get to get that far, but we do. And I, I can't wait to see how it looks. I bet it's so beautiful there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for it too, because Cosmo Cannon is just a song to me, genuinely. But like, it's a really good song. So it's like, so good, <laughs> such a jammer. Yeah, I feel the same way. I was gonna say Cosmo Canyon because the music, also like you know, backstory and stuff for Red. But I don't know. There's a lot of cool places. Costa del Sol. Hmm. Oh yeah, Costa del Sol. Yeah. <laughs> Wu Tai. I'm excited for Wu Tai. Yeah, I think it's gonna Wu-tai. look really beautiful. Ooh. Yeah. Yes. Oh my I'm gosh. Really excited. There's That's a lot a in Wu Tai. So 
yeah, exploring that's going to be really fun. And then obviously gold saucer. And I, I won't shut up about the gold saucer. So. I, it's okay, Minda. I was going to say the gold saucer because it was yeah, so tiny just, in the original. So I'm like, yeah, how it was massive. Tiny, it was like, yeah, it was so cute and like colorful yeah. and exciting. And it's just like, it makes me instantly happy. So I can't wait to see a full-fledged gold saucer again. I wonder if the like gold toss are going to be free. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, I wonder. I feel like there might be like a currency system. Yeah, it would make sense. I, I want to yeah. assume that there will be a currency system. We just don't know what. A couple people Speaking about... said they want to see Gungaga. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Mm. We're like, mm, not so. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> I just want to see the meme. Me? Gungaga. Me? Gungaga. <laughs> Me? Gungaga. I can't help myself. <laughs> oh, man, what about the a... music? I've oh, heard there is a tracks. lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was I was intrigued. I was like, well, I thought I thought my chat said forty, and it was four hundred, and I was like, interesting. Four hundred? Four hundred? That's a lot. Made That's for a rebirth. Lot. Yeah, holy crap! I I just got the vinyl. I was like, this does not say four hundred tracks. <laughs> Where are my four hundred tracks? <laughs> uh, but it's just like the music of Seven is already fantastic, but they're like. This isn't like spoilers because I feel like music is is I kind of kind of a free range of not being okay to talk about. But they basically said that they took the songs from the original and they saw the scene that these songs are being played or what's happening in scenes, and then they did a whole rendition of them to fit the specific scenes' emotions. So you will have Cosmo Canyon, but then maybe somewhere like Red's probably doing something else somewhere somewhere else. And then you may also be hearing Cosmo Canyon stuff in a different way. Wow. Mm -hmm. That wow. would make sense. Like 400 cool. songs! I'm so excited. <laughs> They're going to make you feel really happy and really those. sad for Cosmo Canyon. <laughs> it's like it's like, game. It like, really that's so is. crazy. It's like um, theater rhythm or melody of memory. <laughs> How many oh. songs there are? <laughs> yeah, I can't get over that. <laughs> yeah, like because you can you can um for those that played the demo, you can kind of hear them splicing in the main theme and also like other themes within just of yeah. the beginning part of the demo. And I was just like, and there's gonna be four hundred of these. <laughs> yeah. So wild to think about the dedication. <laughs> it's Art, just awesome. the love. You can definitely Detail. see the love that is in this game, and it's really cool that uh, the people that worked in the original and also newcomers are a part of making Rebirth happen and making Final Fantasy Seven just everything. Um, and you could just see how they how they hear everyone too, and it's like. They they know that they have like this pet like kind of like Tifa they have this pedestal to to live up to but then they're also free to like bring in new people because you know I think it, as a person like me that played the original I would have never met any of you all or like talked to had this opportunity to do this roundtable if you all didn't find the reason to jump into the remake um, so it's just like you can see the love and dedication of like, yes, we, we, we love the original players, but then we also love the people that we want we want to come in and join our world and yeah. never talk about it. Cause that's, what's going to happen as soon as you hit play. <laughs> what, what, else? Just, what else can we look forward to? Uh, uh, somebody mentioned in my chat of alt costumes, alternative costumes, yeah. What, if, what if that would oh, be something true. to look forward to potentially we don't know but like i know that's, that would be super cool to have alternative costumes so. yeah Ooh. just the just the like ping on like the early things that were shown it's just like the cloud on the segue outfit um <laughs> so it's yeah, just like, like we, i don't, don't want to talk about outfit? anything re recent <laughs> stuff but yeah <laughs> Yeah, like I want to have a blue shirt and just like over there whacking monsters. Like, why not? A giant Buster Sword. Yeah, I don't, like a floral 
ensemble. <laughs> that would be so cool because in like remake, like we get a few, but it seems like ba- just on like what's what they showed us a little bit that we'll have opportunities for like a lot more of that mm-hmm. this time around, which is so nice. I mean, I'm gonna have so many things to choose from to cosplay. It's gonna be great. <laughs> like- <laughs> Heck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know the the different Tifa dresses are pretty iconic. They mm-hmm. I always think about them when I think about like outfits and remake. Right. Oh yeah. I wonder if we'll have to if we'll be able if any of the outfits will be like behind like decision walls like they were. Right. Yeah. <gasps> I had no idea yes. when I originally made that decision um that it was like different for everybody until someone told me. Me neither. I got it makes I got your experience so unique. Country girl pink dress. Oh, <laughs> oh. she didn't get to have her moment. I'm sorry, girl. I didn't know. Time <laughs> <laughs> to play the game. It, that was as cool I as like, the original was a choice game without telling you. But now, like rebirth, they're like it's a choice game. <laughs> I just want you to know that you better make your decisions wisely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just it's just easier to do replayability than you just replay it to see the other ones. Yeah, the other choices right. you could do. Yeah, I'm taking everybody out on a date. I don't. I'm. I don't know how many times it's gonna take me <laughs> to play done. this game. If I gotta save scum, it's gonna. Or yes, I'm gonna find a way to like get the code, like Jahara, and just like cram everybody in. <laughs> uh, I I'm really. I know I talked to you already, but I'm really excited for that portion because. I feel like that like really puts like you in the game. It gives like a personal touch to the game because like if you played it in online, if some of us didn't play it on stream, like there was really no way for us to know that the scene we got wasn't the scene that everybody else got. And so now the way we all are going to play, we're all going to get like different scenes and it would be like fun to talk with our friends about it. I'm like, who did you get? Like, no way. Like, what did you say? No way. Yeah. Like, and stuff like that. Like, I don't think is it spoilers to mention like in remake like who we got for like that like nighttime scene because I literally wasn't playing with the with the understanding that like that was going to culminate into a scene and it wasn't until after it happened that people told me that it was like yeah well okay without context then I got Barrett and everyone was like super shook (laughs) like they're like how did you get Barrett yeah (laughs) I was like that's actually (laughs) awesome. (laughs) <laughs> yeah i got barrett and everyone was like i've never seen that before and i was like never seen one before like, <laughs> yeah i didn't know that i didn't know i didn't know you could get barrett i can't remember who i got you guys get? <laughs> i think i, I got, got Aerith. i think i got tifa i got Aerith. Yeah. well uh-huh. i know why i got Aerith though i think it's because i kind of was like going a little bit quicker through the first part of the game so I didn't do all the side quests, and I think that kind of affected it. I'm not sure though. Then I, I did like I, all the side quests later on. I know mm-hmm. I got uh, Aerith because I catered to her because I was like, you know, I'm gonna give her a chance <laughs> this time, <laughs> wow. and so it was just <laughs> it was just a full on Aerith appreciation <laughs> playthrough for me, but it was worth it. I, I loved all I seen all of them at this point, so I think all the scenes are, are very very well done. Um, but yeah, I can't wait for all of you to report back and let me know who you took on the gondola and to find out that uh, Jahara's a, a master coder and <laughs> found a way to get everybody. Because <laughs> they, they did say they're going to. They said they're, they're going to add it more than what was in the original. So more options. Mm-hmm. Ooh. So we might get somebody we didn't even know. So we might get her. Of person oh are yeah, you? and then like you would like have like the four answers. And you're like, I can kind of tell. Like, are you an introvert and extrovert, or an introverted extrovert? Mm. And you're like, <laughs> mm, I can see where this is going. I'm really curious if like the relationships we cultivate with the characters will, in the sort of like what they ask or whatever happens. I have no idea how that works. Is going to make it obvious to us who we're going to end up with, or if if we really will truly be surprised by the outcome. 
Yeah, I think with the whole like friend, like friendship, whatever system, like the personal, you know, um, just dialogues that you have with each character, I think you might be able to kind of tell just based off mm -hmm. of that, like how you talk to each character and spend time with them all like throughout the game. I don't want to say it's going to be like right before you make that, like right before the scene comes, you make that decision. I think it's your, yeah, again, your choices throughout the game and then everyone has like that different level of friendship with you or, or whatever you want to call it so mm -hmm. i think there's gonna be a lot of factors yeah it'll be interesting because i mean i definitely want to do right by everybody so i wonder if you do yeah. right by everybody like who will be the person i, was <laughs> yeah. like, I want cloud to be a soft boy and just be nice to everyone but <laughs> Same. i don't know what's gonna happen do you think like, it'll be, be like you do something nice for somebody, but then somebody hates that. Is it gonna be, you know, like I it's, wonder, like it you know, like you can't please everybody. Yeah. Kind of thing. I Ooh. think that would make sense. There has to be, bad. in my opinion, some conflict with because you can't just please. I don't know. I feel like you can't just please everyone. Yeah, it's, it's complicated. I don't Challenge think that's how it accepted. works. Yeah. Will, will we get like a uh, Tifa will remember that? Yeah, Tifa yeah, like, will I, remember I feel, that. I feel like we'll have moments like that, you know, especially with, with Tifa and Aerith, whoever you spend more time with or depending on what choices you make, it could potentially affect choices in the future um, with that other character. So We also don't know don't how know. the like, story is going to go. Like want... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I hope there's not time stuff. Now I'm gonna be in a panic. I forgot to talk to Red last night. Yeah, you can't go to this thing with that character. You can't do both. I'd be like, what do you mean I can't uh, do both? <laughs> watch me save new save new save. New save. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the problem with me is like I. I don't like to like save scum. Just this is just like a personal thing mm -hmm. because for me it's like what happens happens like i feel like yeah. i have to like live with my consequences or else it like almost like makes me feel less immersed yeah. but i am afraid if i get like something i don't like <laughs> I, yeah I, I thought about like doing a save before that like the the gold saucer thing but i feel like it has something to do with leading up to that so even if you did have a save before it yeah there's gonna be like yeah. other factors so many I mean, things. that's kind of how it is in the original, right? I mean, based mm -hmm. off of the choices, and you didn't even know you were making those yeah. choices, right? Like throughout the game, and then you get to that scene, you're like, oh, okay. Yep. It's... Yeah, uh, I, I mean, can't. I wonder. I am so curious because I wonder if, like in Remake, they make it a lot more overt, it seems, in Rebirth, when like you're how you're interacting and like choices you make. But I also wonder if they'll mix it in with some stuff that is like slightly less overt, like. Without spoilers, like the part where it's just like you can choose when you're all, when you all fall, fall down, you can choose who to go to first to check on. And like, oh. you have no idea what that is going to have. Like, I had no idea. I was just like, mm -hmm. oh, it seems like an in things that seem like a really inconsequential choice that eventually yeah. do affect something. Um, and that, just... that definitely came with the knowledge of playing the original because like for you you're just like i'm just gonna go to whatever but like for like original players we saw them specifically doing that and we're like i know what you're doing <laughs> you're, you're not slick square enix <laughs> yeah that's true i wonder if you play the original if you'll have a little bit of advantage of how things play out um or like maybe not even an advantage but maybe just like maybe maybe knowing how things play out you'll feel biased for how you interact with characters oh maybe yeah maybe if you only ah. played remake and you don't have any context behind like previous relation like established relationships and you're just going to choose based on like your own personal feelings i feel like knowing the original story is going to influence how i choose to act versus when i played remake and it was literally just like i don't know anything about these women <laughs> <laughs> or anything so yeah, it's like, like whatever how much is cloud behaving like the player or how much is cloud behaving like cloud <laughs> yeah yeah mm -hmm. oh man 
Oh, it's all gonna just so gonna <laughs> it's we all don't know what's gonna happen obviously we have not played the game but it's just gonna throw a curve on and be like surprise it was we're just gonna throw in a bunch of people you never even thought like here's <laughs> this bartender at seventh heaven that worked for tifa <laughs> like five minutes ago <laughs> like, <what? laughs> uh, perfect <laughs> excellent but yeah, it was such a such a such a fun round table today to talk about Final Fantasy VII. And I want to give another shout out to Square Enix for sponsoring today's round table. And as we wrap things up here, we're gonna go around again, starting with Spofy, then backwards. Um and like remind everybody where they can find you and what you do and all that fun stuff. Okie doke. Um yeah, I'm Spofy. I am a purple Lalafell VTuber and you can often find me on Twitch streaming Final Fantasy 14 and other cozy games, indie games and JRPGs. Um absolutely we'll be doing a rebirth playthrough as I'm sure everyone here is thinking about playing it themselves. Um and yeah, I'm Spofy on S P O F I E on all platforms. Um, I'm Sarah Key, and uh, hopefully I didn't make too many Kingdom Hearts references because I tend to do that. Um, but I, a uh, variety streamer, like I said earlier, um, play a lot of JRPGs, and you can find me at Sarah Key on Twitch and YouTube, or the Sarah Key on Twitter and Instagram. And I'm really excited to play Rebirth. <laughs> Yes, I am also really excited. I'll be playing Rebirth when it comes out, um, of, of course, and trying to play as much as I can um, and try to get all the details I can and hopefully find Easter eggs like what we were talking about. But um, but I'm Miss Kylie. I'm also a variety streamer. I play a lot of story-driven games, RPGs, JRPGs, as well as MMORPGs. Um, it's quite a lot, but we like to have fun. Um, I'm a very family, I'm a family friendly streamer and we'd, I'd love to have you. I'd love to have you for when I play Rebirth. Uh, hello again, I'm Edna Baby. I'm super stoked to be part of this round table, by the way. Um, it was so, so fun talking to you ladies about Final Fantasy VII, but um, I'm mostly on twitch.tv. Uh, you can find me at twitch.tv forward slash Minda Baby. I'm a variety streamer, but I also uh, play a lot of Final Fantasy XIV. Um, but I do JRPGs, RPGs, Souls games, and the occasional party game with friends. So would love to have you guys hang out. And I will be playing Rebirth. Um, I might try to do Remake first, but um, yeah, that's not, that's not looking good so far. But yeah, see you for <laughs> Rebirth. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Jahara Jade. You can find me Jahara Jade pretty much anywhere except for YouTube, which is Jahara Jade Games. I have spent the last couple of years, starting from 14, working my way through the entire standalone Final Fantasy catalog. We are currently on disc three of eight, if you want to come and hang out, because we're working on trying to finish that before Rebirth drops. And there's just so much. I have such love for the franchise, and it's nice to be able to see all of the references and the homages and the nods to everything all at once. I'm also a cosplayer who really heavily cosplays from video games, including the Final Fantasy series. So feel free to follow me anywhere. You can come to my stream. I'd love to chat with you. Um, I will be playing Rebirth, and just to warn you, it will be a really slow thorough playthrough because i am obsessed with the little details including like the sparkles in the sky and the bugs and grass so if you're okay with that come hang out with us as we explore and world build this whole thing yay nice and I am Joy. I go as Curious Joy. I am a JRPG fighting game streamer. You can find me Curious Joy everywhere. And I will 100% be playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I'm currently in the process of my remake playthrough from, the, um, from this video. And I will be finishing literally the Tuesday before Rebirth drops. And then on Wednesday, I'll be watching Advent Children to just lead it up. So hopefully Wednesday at 9 p.m. I can... <laughs> pop on and say hello to rebirth but yeah i would definitely be playing rebirth day one i cannot wait and yeah join me if you want to have fun and if you like music because i'll be stuck at the piano for a very long time <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that is it for this round table again thank you so much square enix for sponsoring this round table and it was such 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 an amazing time to talk with you ladies today i cannot wait to talk to you guys again once we beat it 
and have a spoiler chat. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> it's going to be great. Yeah, yes. I cannot wait. <laughs> All right. I don't know how to say goodbye now. Bye, ladies. It's okay. Bye. 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 Bye.